Hello dear students, welcome to Top Scholars. Today we will be discussing about action of ammonium hydroxide on certain salt solutions. So friends, first let's start with qualitative analysis. Now friends, what do we mean by qualitative analysis? Now if I give you an unknown substance and tell you to identify what is this unknown substance, how are you going to identify this? Yes, by doing some physical and chemical tests, right? Now physical tests generally involves test that is color, texture as well as solubility. Whereas chemical tests involves reaction with other elements or compounds. So friends, let's now discuss how we can identify the metal ion that is present in certain metallic salt solutions by using ammonium hydroxide. Now friends, when a salt solution is treated with ammonium hydroxide solution, it results in the precipitation of metal hydroxide. You can see we have a downward arrow over here, right? This downward arrow indicates that metal hydroxide precipitate is formed. Along with this, we have a salt which is formed in the solution. So, when a salt solution is treated with ammonium hydroxide solution, it results in the precipitation of metal hydroxide. And along with this, we have a salt which is formed in the solution. Now, friends, the color of the precipitate, that is metal hydroxide formed, varies depending upon the metal ion that is present in the salt solution. So, from the color of the precipitate that is formed and the solubility of this precipitate in excess of ammonium hydroxide helps us to identify the metal ion that is present in the salt solution. Because the color of the precipitate that is formed varies depending upon the metal ion and the solubility of the precipitate in excess of ammonium hydroxide also differs depending upon the metal ion that is present, right? So as we saw over here that if I take a salt solution and treat it with ammonium hydroxide solution, it results in the precipitation of metal hydroxide and we have a salt which is formed in the solution. Let's take an example to understand this, right? Now here I have calcium nitrate solution which is a colorless solution. Now if I add drops of ammonium hydroxide into this solution, we do not get any precipitate formation. Why is this so? This is because of the concentration of OH- ions. The concentration of OH- is less in order to form the precipitate. Now let's move on to ferrous sulfate solution friends. Ferrous sulfate solution is a green colored solution. And if I add drops of ammonium hydroxide into this solution, it results in the formation of dirty green precipitate of ferrous hydroxide, that is FeOH twice. Along with this, I get ammonium sulfate which is colorless. So, what is the color of precipitate that is formed over here? Yes, it is dirty green precipitate. But if I add excess of ammonium hydroxide to this precipitate, this dirty green precipitate of ferrous hydroxide is insoluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide. So friends, if the precipitate formed is dirty green in color and it is insoluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide, then it means that the salt solution contains Fe2 plus ion. Now let's move on to ferric chloride. What is the color of ferric chloride? Yellow, exactly. Now if I add drops of ammonium hydroxide to this yellow colored solution, it results in the precipitation of ferric hydroxide. And what is the color of the precipitate form? Reddish brown. Along with this, we get ammonium chloride, which is again colorless. But friends, is this precipitate of ferric hydroxide soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide? No, this precipitate of ferric hydroxide is insoluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide solution. So this means that if you get a precipitate which is reddish brown in color and if this precipitate is insoluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide, then it means that the metal ion that is present in the salt is Fe3+. Let's move on to copper sulfate. Copper sulfate, the color is blue exactly. And now if I add drops of ammonium hydroxide into this solution, it results in the precipitation of copper hydroxide. And what is the color of the precipitate? You can see pale blue precipitate. Along with this, we get ammonium sulfate, which is colorless. But friends, this precipitate of copper hydroxide is soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide. That is, if you add excess of ammonium hydroxide to this precipitate, copper hydroxide dissolves, it is soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide. So this means that 
If you get a precipitate which is pale blue in color and which is soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide, it means that the metal ion that is present in the salt is Cu2+. Now friends, let's move on to zinc sulphate. Zinc sulphate again, colorless solution. If I add ammonium hydroxide to this solution, it results in the precipitation of zinc hydroxide. And what is the color of the precipitate? Yes, white color, gelatinous precipitate. Along with this, we get ammonium sulphate, which is colorless. But friends, is this precipitate of zinc hydroxide soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide? Yes, zinc hydroxide is soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide. So this means that if you get a precipitate which is white and gelatinous and it is soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide, then it means that the salt contains Zn2 plus ion. Now let's move on to lead nitrate. Lead nitrate is a colorless solution and if you add drops of ammonium hydroxide, you get chalky white precipitate of lead hydroxide. Along with this, we get ammonium nitrate solution. Now friends, this precipitate of lead hydroxide is insoluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide. So this means that if you get a chalky white precipitate, which is insoluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide solution, it means that the salt contains Pb2 plus ion. To learn more about this topic, download Top Scholars app.